so good morning, everyone. My name is Paul Phillips, and I, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the district manager for Community District 4 here in the Bronx. I want to welcome you all to the inaugural stakeholder event of the Jerome Avenue Revitalization Collaborative, better known as JARC. I want everybody to say that 10 times very fast. I've had a courtside seat for every aspect of Jerome Avenue, and I've also had the privilege to play an integral role in every phase of the Jerome Avenue neighborhood plan. From the first meeting at the Bronx Museum of the Arts in 2014, to the dozens of community meetings leading up to city council approval in March 2018, I was there and ultimately the adoption of the neighborhood plan. I told everyone then that this is when the real work would begin. JARC members, was I right? JARC has given me the opportunity to work closely with some of the most extraordinary men and women over the last two years in the city of New York. I would like to thank Jobs First who have provided exceptional guidance and structures throughout this process. We would especially like to thank Diana Torres and Denisha Thompson, two dynamic women without whom we would not be here today. Over the next three days, you will learn about who we are as an organization. The saying is quality over quantity. However, we have both. 16 steering committee members, 70 members of the partnership. We have principles of operation and bylaws, as well as a budget and a three-year strategic plan. We put the time, effort, and thought into every aspect of the partnership because we believe wholeheartedly that our neighborhoods and the residents deserve nothing less than our best. In the next three days, we hope you come away with a sense of who we are, what our mission is, and our three core competencies why we are deeply committed to the partnership, and then what? The value we will bring to area residents and businesses around inclusive economic development. Thank you all for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you throughout the course of this week and for years to come as we create the building blocks for this partnership. I will now turn it over to Marjorie Parker, President and CEO of Jobs First. Thank you, Paul and Roman, um, for that. Um, lovely introduction and Paul always for um, your energy and commitment to a process since um, 2014. Um, Jobs First um, was invited um, to Jerome Avenue in um, 2018 to um, by the community, Paul and others to help facilitate uh, the process of developing a collaborative um, initiative to respond to the um, incoming um, economic development activities as a result of the um, rezoning. We, I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about jobs first and I'll talk a little bit um, more broadly around how the work is supported. So uh, jobs first NYC is a, um, we're an intermediary focused on um, finding solutions for young adults and their communities in New York City. Um, we advance solutions that break down barriers and transform the systems um, serving young people in their communities. The, we work with about 160 partners across New York City. Um, we believe that transforming um, systems require intentional and inclusive collaboration. Um, as a neutral partner, we bring together diverse partnership um, collaborative of colleges and um, employers and community-based organizations, policymakers, um, all the same folks that um, attended the many, many, many meetings that we um, helped to facilitate um, during the, the process of developing the JARC. Our process centers around a collaborative five step um, process that, that's designed to identify challenges, incubate new solutions, and advance what works. What that simply means is that you know we, we conduct an investigative stage, which we did with um, our partners in Jerome. We listen and learn. Um, you know, we gathered all the ideas that were put on the table and we together try to figure out what makes sense. Uh, we took those ideas through an incubation phase um, to develop what the partnership would be doing and what you are involved in today is the launch um, of that work, which is the implementation stage of this work. 
Um, Job Source will continue to work with the partnership as we evaluate um, the foundation of the work that we've developed, evaluate the performance of the, the collaborative, evaluate the work that we said we'd do together and make adjustments um, along the way. The process that Jerome uses is what you see here on the screen. Um, we started with data, we did look at an asset infrastructure, we did supply and labor market demand, um, who is working, what are they doing, where are they working, how much money are people making, what jobs are in the community, what jobs should we be bringing to the community, what skills training should we be bringing to the community, um, develop some goal setting for the partnership, spend some more time on um, goal setting, develop a logic model and theory of change, um, norm and governance, which is the steering committee here um, that Paul and what Roman mentioned, and um, the, the implementation plan that you see in front of you. Our approach uh, at Joshua centers on people first. Um, you know, all our meetings are open to everyone throughout the process. Um, at any time, anyone could show up. Um, we look at collective genius at each at each meeting. You know, we'll work. Um, to deeper um, understand the interorganizational relationships because uh, there are a lot of organizations involved in developing the JARC um, and we, they need to understand each other and we need to understand them and this is how we break down barriers and help folks to understand that we're all working at the same issues from different places. Um, informal objectivity for us, it's about inviting feedback on partnership development, um, the process, um, folks who are coming to the meeting, bringing in guest speakers who help us understand how we should be doing the work better and how to improve our own practice. Um, job source is neutral throughout all this process. Our goal here is to make sure that everyone who's involved in this process um, understand and learn um, from what has come before, what people are doing really well. And then we, you know, we leverage expertise and this is where we develop all ideas. So that's what the process looks like. I wanna take a mo quick moment here to um, um, the Jerome Avenue is a part of the Bronx Impact, which is a part of the Jerome Avenue, uh, which is a part of the Empire State um, um, Poverty um, Reduction Initiative that Governor Cuomo launched. Children's Aid Society, um, who um, is the leader for this initiative in the Bronx, um, also approached Jobs First NYC um, in 2018. Abbott Fernandez was on the phone. Um, Rose um, Stefano was on the phone. Phoebe Boyer, who I think I think is on also, it, um, approached us because they'd also been doing some work um, um, with the um, with the collaborative with co through collaborative work through the South Bronx Rising Together initiative, and had been doing some listening. Um, to residents um, through local convenings across several districts there in the Bronx, and also thought that we would be a good partner for, for working with the Jerome Avenue Collaborative um, and advancing the development of this work. And so they supported the development of the work through the, through the initiative. So a lot of the food that you saw um, from the guest speakers that came in, this was part of collaboration with um, with the Children's Aid Society. I also wanna, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't um, also thank some of the other folks that really supported the work in the Bronx, such as JP Morgan Chase um, Foundation and um, the Altman Foundation. I know that some of those folks are on this morning. So thank you. And we look forward to continuing your work, the work with you and how you will support the JARC um, collaborative moving forward. At this time, again, I want to thank all of you. I want to thank the steering committee. Thank all of you for all the work that you've done over the last two years through the maybe 100 plus meetings or more. Um, and um, appreciate your continuing support. So I'm going to now turn it over to Purina. Purina. Thank you so much, Marjorie. Thank you so much to Jobs First for all of your support. My name is Pierina Sanchez. I am one of the members of the steering committee. And I'm just here also to welcome us um, and to share that uh, one quick thing about the JARC is that we have what is called a circular leadership structure. So you will see that in full display today. We don't have a chair. We don't have a vice chair. We don't have a treasurer. We all make decisions collectively. 
uh, and, and we work together and we step up and we step back um, as needed. So just to share a little bit about what you'll hear from us today, uh, today's agenda, next slide. Uh, we are going to welcome you as, as we just have. We have a quick icebreaker, and I just want to encourage everyone to actively use the chat function. Uh, we want to hang out with you in this new normal, so hanging out over the chat, even as we have conversations and, and we're sharing about uh, what we're doing. So we're going to have, um, Paul is going to give us an overview of the corridor, uh, as well as Ken giving us some background. Ken uh, from the Community Board 5 is going to give us some background on the, the actual JARC. Uh, we'll share some success stories. We've been very, very active over the last year, uh, but also two years, as you'll hear. And then we want to just open it up for discussion. We will have been chatting the whole time on the, on the chat box, but then we want to have an actual live discussion. Uh, so with that, I want to uh, ask everyone for the, the next slide. Uh, I want to ask everyone, what is your favorite spot on the Jerome Avenue corridor? Where do you eat? Where do you, uh, where do you hang out? Where do you, where do you have positive experiences in the corner? We can, in the corridor, if you could just drop that in the chat. And I'll share that my, one of my favorite spots on the corridor is just uh, Burnside Avenue. I see Justine's, excellent Justine's. Anyone else? Other other favorite places on the corridor? Suyo restaurant. Oh yeah, can't wait till till we can safely go back there and and uh, have events there again. Others? Fordham University. El Valle for lunch. Absolutely amazing, amazing food. And how about just like everywhere with the music? Just the music blaring. You know, sometimes it can get a little loud. <laughs> All right, Burnside Avenue, Bronx Community College. Yes, yes, Burnside Avenue for shopping, Devaney Triangle, Fordham Road, all of the above. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing this. Oh, as a kid, McDonald's on Burnside and Jerome. Yeah, they have that little play area, right? Dining and live music, yes, at Suyo Restaurant. It's a favorite, Davidson Community Center, providing all kinds of services for the community. <laughs> Wendy's, all right, all right, Paul, I see you. <laughs> Um, amazing, amazing. Well, please, uh, please keep using the chat function. I will be here as a sort of timekeeper. Uh, but next, I'm going to just turn it over to Paul uh, to give us a brief overview of the corridor. Thank you, Padina. Okay, everybody. So I'm back. So a little bit about the corridor. You can see on this map here, uh, the Jerome Avenue study spans three community districts, community districts four, five and seven. It is about 93 blocks. One of the things that's really important to point out in terms of the context of this area, so we have a lot of auto related businesses and a lot of the businesses in general here uh, are on, we're on month to month leases. So that's a real issue that we're, that we're charged with here. And it covers about 256,000 residents. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, so you can see here the graphic in terms of all the people that live in the study area, but work elsewhere. So I think it's important to point out here that about 95% of the residents work elsewhere other than in the district. It's only about 13% of the people that live in the, live and work in the study area. So that's a big, big, big deal, meaning that people are traveling outside uh, for work. So one of our goals is to bring more economic development, more opportunity and more jobs to the area so that people don't have to travel as far. Uh, next slide, please. So these are our economic realities. And again, one thing I would point out is here, so you see the median annual income is about 27,000 uh, in the study area and in New York City, it's about 57,000. Uh, one thing that's really important to point out that these are pre-pandemic. And I think I can't emphasize enough that what the pandemic has done and the impact it has had, I think across the world, but again, we're gonna focus on our local geography here in the city. Those numbers are significantly lower. So you have people here who are really struggling Unemployment in the borough itself is at about 20%, and that we know that in the study area, the areas we're talking about, it's anywhere from 25 to 30%. So a huge issue here that we're grappling with and that we wanna help people with. Next slide, please. So challenges and barriers for local workforce and, uh, uh, and businesses. So unemployment and low wages are key challenges. We talked about unemployment. We know that that was an issue pre-pandemic. It's certainly a huge issue now uh, as we look to the future post-COVID. Uh, 
there are well-paying jobs in the study area, but fewer for area residents. You saw that seeing how many people travel outside of the area for work. Educational attainment is a barrier to employment. Again, a lot of these things point to some of our key and core competencies, which you'll see over the next three days. And then industry certifications and work experience are valued by employers, but it can be difficult to attain. Sometimes that requires people to bring take money out of their pocket to pay for things, and that can be a challenge for people when you're either underemployed or unemployed. Uh, next slide, please. So what we're seeing, so you see here um, some property transactions here. So it's been very active. This is this is almost uh, just before the rezoning was actually approved. There were transactions that happened before this. You can already see um, some businesses have been displaced. You see some residential development here uh, that is uh, in development here. But again, you know, some of these smaller mom and pop small businesses, which are really the core competency, they're really the, the fabric of neighborhoods. Um, are being displaced and so you know we have a lot we have a huge role in trying to help these businesses uh stay in the area and be uh, maintained and be vital uh next slide please uh so next i'm going to turn it over to ken brown the district manager from board five who will take you through a little bit of the partnership and how we got to where we are today okay good good morning everybody i uh oh there we are <laughs> Morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Paul, Perina, Roman, uh, for for hosting this a very, very important event. Uh, as Paul said, this is the accumulation of many, many years of hard work in Community Board Five. Next slide, please. We yeah, we have been working on economic revitalization and the Jerome Avenue rezoning since, well, really going back to 2002. And then it began in earnest, next slide please, in 2017, when the Department of City Planning certified the uh, concept of the Jerome Avenue um, rezoning. That was then sent to the respective community boards, community boards four, five, and uh, seven, to uh, consider what this would mean and whether this was something that was considered beneficial for the community. That was then, um, oops, sorry. <clears throat> that was sent to the community boards in 2014 and the boards began to codify their needs and priorities for the rezoning. Ultimately, this, this culminated in September of 2016 in the Jerome Avenue Neighborhood Study Goals and Priorities. And this identified, if you will, seven buckets of needs and priorities, and these were ultimately codified in the rezoning that was passed. Next slide, please. In 2017, all in 2017, the Davidson Community Center, which is not only a core member of the steering committee, but is also the JARC's um, fiscal sponsor, and WEDCO, a vital stakeholder in the rezoning process and in JARC, released the Jerome Avenue Bronx Needs uh, Bronx Commercial Needs Assessment. And as Paul alluded to, this was sort of an economic overview or snapshot of the corridor. It addressed um, the economic vitality, the um, kinds and qualities of retail and business activity in the community. And this sort of set the framework and the research that informed the rezoning going forward. Community participation was garnered through 40 design charrettes throughout the three um, districts. And ultimately, community boards four, five, and seven voted on the resolution for the rezoning, as you said, as you see on the slide. Um, and they were submitted as affirmative votes on October 30th, 2017, and ultimately passed through the leadership of our two. Um, Council members, Council Member Gibson and Cabrera, at a city council vote in March 22 of 2018. And that led to the codification of the Jerome Avenue rezoning. And one of the key stakes in that was the JARC, 
And I'll now pass it off very willingly to uh, Lorita Watson. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Uh, would be going to the next slide, please. Now. Uh, it started with a question. What can we do to advocate for Jerome community? Uh, Jock form in response to the 2018 rezoning of the Jerome Avenue corridor with the goal. Okay, with the goal of bringing about economic growth for local residents, employers and workers impacted by the rezoning. It is comprised of community residents like myself, advocates and service providers in the West Bronx. We seek to support Bronx businesses and residents impacted by the Jerome Avenue rezoning. Next slide. Our mission is to bring about inclusive economic growth and sustainability for local residents, employers and workers impacted by the Jerome Avenue rezoning. Next slide, please. These are the steering committees. Uh, myself, Loretta Watson, Perina Sanchez, we are uh, community residents, the Bronx Community College, uh, Bronx Jerome Tremont uh, Commercial District, the Bronx uh, Overall Economic Development Corporation, the Bronx Chamber, uh, Bronx Cooperative Development Initiative, uh, community Board 4, as well as Community Board 5, the Davidson Community Center, the HOPE Program, Meta Bronx, South Bronx, UMA, WEDCO, a uh, sponsor uh, is the Bronx Impact, and Implementation Partner, Job First, NYC. Next slide, please. Bronx Avenue Revitalization Collaborative. The approach was an employer facing network that will provide residents with direct referrals to jobs available through the JARCS agreement with real estate developers, employers, and other partners. Two, a virtual and brick and mortar business hub that will provide local business owners and employers with access to business development resources made available through JARC's agreement with city agencies and other partners, connecting low-income residents to grants and financial support to pay for educational or workforce development training that would otherwise not be able to afford, that they would not be able to afford. Next slide. Success okay. stories, I guess go to Farina. Yes, excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Larita. Thank you. My, my, Thank you. My, my favorite resident on the on the jerk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so now, um, you know, thank, thank you so much, everyone. So we are now going to tell you a little bit about what we have been up to over the last few of uh, over the last few months over the over the last few years. Uh, the fact of the matter is that even though we're launching today, even though we are uh, formally coming out into the world, you know, and sharing sharing about the JARC and, and trying to grow, you have been here the whole time. You have been getting all of our emails. You know that we have been active. So first, I, I wanna turn it over to uh, Marco Castro, Senior Program Manager at WEDCO. Thanks, Rita. So my, yes, my name is Marco Castro and I work for WEDCO or the Women's Housing Economic Development Corporation. Um, I am, um, you know, a lot of what my job entails is going door to door with businesses and trying to figure out how to um, help and support businesses. Next slide, please. So, yes, you know, the as Ken and Paul have mentioned, um, the Jerome Avenue rezoning has uh, offered a lot of different opportunities, but also many challenges to the Jerome Avenue area and the neighborhoods around it. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of this stems from uh, increased uh, rates to biz local businesses. Some businesses that don't have leases have had to close and the pandemic has only made it uh, worse or our work even more critical. Uh, so throughout this last two years, we have been going out and doing independently 
a lot of the work to uh, try to find out what businesses need, what support systems they need, and how we can help them. So the picture that you see on the right is from Davidson Community Center uh, going out and providing support to individual businesses. Um, and, you know, like we've been meeting on a regular basis every week trying to figure out how our independent uh, sort of goals can align and we can be better at supporting the local businesses around the Jerome Avenue rezoning area. Next slide. So these are some of the things that we've been up to over the last couple of years. We've hosted multiple workshops on topics such as PPP, taxes and financial management, commercial lease rights and assistance, COVID reopening, marketing and branding. We've provided technical assistance to help businesses apply for relief programs and grants and loans, such as the Bronx Business Continuity Loan, the New York City Small Business Emergency Grant, IDLE, PPP, uh, the LISC Small Business Relief Grant. We've connected businesses to free legal services uh, through different providers to help them negotiate leases and also to address other legal issues that they might have or contract issues. We've helped businesses establish online presence. Uh, we've opened the first bilingual auto training center, the Elite Auto Tech Training Center, the EATTC. We've launched a business web platform to help businesses connect to each other and to other services through the Bronx, uh, Bronx Exchange app. Next slide, please. But we're, as I mentioned, we are trying to figure out what's next and how we can leverage our strengths to better deliver services to the local community. Uh, one of our latest initiatives has been trying to promote uh, Sobro's work to help businesses apply for the PPP program. And we will be having a more dedicated session tomorrow on that at 10, so please come back. Uh, we've also launched a WhatsApp group to help connect businesses to resources, keep in touch with them now in a time that it's really difficult to do door-to-door -door outreach. It provides a little network so that they can ask questions about what's affecting them now. So for example, receiving help with permits, um, receiving additional information about land, loans and grants, uh, news updates from the city or the state that they must know about uh, in order to avoid penalties and fines. We encourage you to sign up for our group. Uh, we also have it in Spanish so that we can provide in-language services to folks. Uh, and there's so much more that we want to launch. Um, and so we uh, encourage you to sign up for our newsletter on our website, darkbx.com, to keep up to date. Uh, if you have some services that you would like to provide or that your businesses has to provide, we encourage you to join one of our working groups to help us figure out how we can better serve the Bronx. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Marco. So again, I just want to thank Marco, uh, Karina, Wedco, all of our partners who have been doing amazing work. You saw some of the things that have been happening. This is even before we even launched specifically as Dark. Uh, so I just want to thank them for all their continued support and effort. They have been doing it and they're going to keep doing it. So thank you so much. Uh, so now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, driving development discussions. And if my partner in crime, Karen Michelle Marco, is here, um, so we want to talk a little bit about development discussions. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the challenges, the things that we're, serve, that we're solving for here is that, you know, development happens. If you look around you, if you walk around your neighborhood, there is probably a building under construction. And one of the things that we recognize very early on, even before, you know, the Jerome Avenue rezoning or JARC is that we are not participating in every aspect of economic development that is happening here in the borough. Construction happens, you know, developers will come in, oh, we're gonna build 200 units of affordable housing, but are we really participating in that? Are we working on those sites? Do we have carpenters? Do we have, you know, do we have bricklayers? Do we have people in the trades from our borough that are working on these sites? And do we have MWBEs locally 
Bronx-based MWBEs who are working on these sites. And so that is where the that is where this this discussion has begun. And so uh, Karen Michelle knows pretty well over the last year, as developers come to myself, you know, to the community board as an introductory um, to introduction to what they're going to be building. One of my very first questions is, would you be willing to work with the Jerome Avenue Revitalization Collaborative, better known as JARC, on your project? And so we want to talk a little bit about uh, one of the successes we had with um, MVD and Urban Strategies. So Karen, Michelle, do you want to talk a little bit about how that came about and sort of what that uh, success story looks like? Sure. Thank you so much, Paul. And I'm, I know Derek was um, from MBD was on before, but he's actually developing a property. So he's having a site visit right now. And um, LaShawn of Urban Strategy, who's also critical, was um, having some internet issues. So I'm proud to um, talk on their behalf and um, look, look forward to our video that we put on Friday to sort of see the discussion wow. live. What I appreciate, again, like in a, in a circular leadership, we really are all working together. There's no, um, there's no, um, you know, hierarchical system. And then again, um, like Paul said before, uh, shout out to um, Diana Torres and Denisha um, Thompson for like sort of spearheading this over these many, many years. Um, but what I love about our partnership with, um, you know, the D Community Development Board is that we, we get to hear um, about these opportunities way before they're show already. Um, and so in this instance, um, when we were connected um, to um, MBD through Paul, um, you know, Derek was able to say like, hey, we have these job opportunities that are available. And in partnership with LaShawn from Urban Strategies, um, she was able to say, you know, there's not a lot of folks that actually have the scaffolding um, 16 user certificate, which is um, required. In this um, in this position, um, and so without a, like just so quickly, um, Derek said, "Oh, okay, nope. There's no local folks that have the certificate. Can we get them trained? Can we get them um, ready for this?" Um, and it, within a blink of an eye, and a lot of work um, for the whole committee, we were able to um, pull together two rounds of training on the weekend, so that folks that were working could have access to the training, um, and we were able to um, get over eight people um, set up with a scaffolding 16, um, which not only helps them get a job, um, you know, in this local development, but also gets them an accelerated wage, right? Sometimes labor positions can go up to, um, you know, start at $15 an hour. When you come in with a scaffolding 16 user, you're automatically bumped into the um, second or third tier um, of this, um, of a wage. So really just wonderful, wonderful, um, partnership that um, was able to, you know, get information from Paul, work with the developer, provide local training um, that was executed right away. It was just um, absolutely a fantastic partnership. And we see, um, as again, Paul said, more opportunities come into the community because we are meeting them in the beginning. Um, we are able to um, make sure that we're planning for the development that's coming. Um, and I would also be remiss for not mentioning the good folks from Matt Equities and Joy, who've been part of the um, Workforce Development Committee. Whenever they have um, opportunities in the community, um, they're, they're the, I'm the first person that they go to to see if there's um, anyone that we can fill a carpenter position, an electrician position, a labor position, and just been a, it's been a wonderful ecosystem that we've um, developed here. I know um, we're going to send more information about social media, but if you you know you do know folks in the neighborhood that would be interested in these jobs, please keep in touch with us because they you never know it's um, you never know we could have a, a job today to um, to fill. Also, I think Lisa Marie has been the, the um, author of these beautifully designed side um, slides. I just want to give her credit as well. Yeah. Um, and just one last thing I'd just like to say about this, and thank you, Karen Michelle, you've been um, amazing. I, I sent her emails like, you know, at 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, hey, Karen Michelle, meet so-and-so, this development is happening. And she's probably like, but she has been fantastic. And I just want to thank the HOPE program and all of our partners, particularly MBD and Urban Strategies. One of the things I will also say about this is that you very rarely see, at least in my experience, I've worked with the city for almost 15 years, and you very rarely see a developer step up like MBD and Urban Strategies did. Just, I mean, they didn't even clinch and said, okay, so you know, so let, let's get people trained. I was gonna call, so I cannot thank uh, Derek Lovett and LaShawn Henry uh, again. Queen, I thank you guys enough for your commitment to our mission and the work that we do 
and for your support. Thank you so much. Excellent. Um, Karen and Paul, you good? Amazing, amazing. Okay, uh, can we get the next slide? All right, so one of the things that you may all have seen uh, coming out of the JARC is our advocacy around financial services. Uh, next slide. So we, we all know our community too well, right? We, we know the history of disinvestment that, that uh, is, is our origin story in many ways in the Bronx, right? A history of abandonment that has our community still recovering from arson uh, in the 70s and 80s um, and, and just a huge transition of the community over, over this time. As well as, you know, dating even further back behind that, a uh, federal redlining policy and, and other racist policies that have landed our community where we are today. We have depressed property values and we have had blocked wealth generation for folks in our community for far too long. And so that is why I wanna give all credit to Community Board 5 um, really for flagging this issue and, and talking about it. We, we as a community were dismayed uh, over the summer when we learned that one, uh, JP Morgan Chase, who had a branch on Burnside Avenue, uh, was going to be, was, was closing indefinitely uh, because of some issues on, on their property. And two, Amalgamated Bank uh, was also, um, as a result of following the, res the, the pandemic uh, enforced closure, we're going to be planning to, to permanently close in our community. Next slide. And so with these realities, uh, Community Board 5 uh, convened a number of meetings <clears throat> on which the JARC partnered uh, in, in those beginning days where we were talking about what does this mean for the community? What this is reminding us of, of times past and what can we do about it? And I want to also thank uh, ANHD, Association for Neighborhood Housing Services, uh, Development, sorry. Um, ANHD has provided us a lot of technical assistance with understanding the context in which uh, this disinvestment falls. So there, there are redressive policies that uh, help Community Board 5, Community Board 4, and the JARC really think about the, the, the context of our bank closures. One is that we here in, in the district, we uh, are in a banking development district, which is a program, a subsidy program that exists in New York State to encourage the establishment of banks in underbanked areas like ours, right? And so a bank like Amalgamated was actually benefiting from subsidized deposits um, and, and other benefits from the banking development district to be here in the first place. A Davidson Community Center, Community Board 5 in 2008, uh, played an instrumental role in having them establish their services here, their branch here. And then we also have, you know, of course, the Community Reinvestment Act, which is a piece of legislation, piece of federal legislation passed in the civil rights era of the 1960s and 70s in response to these issues we're talking about, right? In response to systemic redlining, discrimination, and disinvestment. And the Community Reinvestment Act, or the CRA, requires banks to lend and provide services equitably. Right, and to support community development in the places where they do business. So knowing uh, the JARC understanding that we have these policies in place to protect us from disinvestment, to attract investment into our community, we engaged with the banks, right? And so we, we kicked it off with a, a press conference in August where we drew, uh, I wanna say about 40 or 50 folks from the JARC, from the community. Thank you for, for all the partners that were able to attend. And that was that was instrumental. That, that's, that's been an incredible launching point because following that press conference, we've actually had monthly conversations with Amalgamated Bank about their Community Reinvestment Act um, commitments in Community Board 5, as well as conversations with Chase Bank um, on a very regular basis. We're becoming very, very good partners, I think, um, in, in many ways. And so as of now, what we're seeing is that Chase Bank will be reopening. Uh, they did commit to that in the second quarter of 2021. Um, and they will be, not only will they be reopening, but they will be reopening with expanded services and a renewed community focus uh, on, on, on the West Bronx. Um, and additionally, you know, in 
in the context of this historical moment that we're in, we are also uh, having conversations with Chase about um, more concrete reinvestments, grants, and things like that, opportunities for, for the corridor and for the community. And uh, as well with Amalgamated Bank, although they will not be reopening a physical branch, we are in conversations with them about making uh, investments available to our small businesses, making loans, partnering with CDFIs in our community to make more capital available to our small businesses in our community. So uh, with that, I want to turn it over to um, those. Those are our, some of our success stories. Welcome your, your thoughts in the chat. And I want to turn it over to Lisa Marie Pierre, who is program manager uh, for economic development at Bronx Community College and all around rock star, as you've seen in the chat. Thank you, everyone. Um, next slide, please. So I really love this photo because um, when I joined JARC last year in February 2020, I met everyone for the first time before we had shut down and I learned about the mission and we quickly and seamlessly moved to Zoom. And I really enjoyed this photo because it shows that everything that we've done, you can do virtually and we've done a, an excellent job. Um, next slide, please. So as you've heard, um, JARC is a cross-sector partnership um, working on economic development, inclusive growth in the Jerome Avenue corridor. And we are operating in a circular um, leadership model. And so this partnership workflow um, kind of shows how we are working. We have a steering committee and we have a work group. The steering committee meets once a month and the work groups meet, um, some of them meet bi-weekly and others meet weekly. So we have an economic development work group, a finance work group, marketing, st uh, strategy, and workforce development. And so each group um, leans on the other and follows the direction of the other. So the steering committee makes decisions, the work group completes the task, and strategy work group kind of provides some direction. And we share that information with one another to inform how we're going to be moving forward. So the work groups are open to anyone in the community that is interested in the Jerome Avenue corridor. Um, the steering committee will be opening up membership, I believe in like about a year after we have this first startup. And so for anyone who is interested, you could always visit our website or contact us because we would love to have people um, participate. If there's something in this conversation that's piqued your interest, maybe you wanna work on the budget and we would love for you to come join that group. Um, maybe you like social media and you wanna help with some graphics or uh, maybe you like thinking about strategic direction, you can come join the strategy work group. So there's something for everyone in the community, depending on what you're interested in. And we would love for you to come join um, the group and really work with a unique partnership. Next slide, please. So there's many ways to connect with JARC. If you, for whatever reason, don't have time to work in the work group or join a steering committee, um, you could visit our website. And so that's jarcbx.com. On that website, we have information about um, the group. We have resources. We have a contact page. So that's basically a hub for you to find out anything you need about JARC. You could also shoot us an email at jarcbx at gmail.com. Uh, at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, we are JARCBX. You can use the hashtag JARCBX. And for this week, you can use JARC Week. Next slide. And so I'm really excited to see this many people have turned out for this event. This is really exciting. Um, you know, we're excited to launch and we're really happy to have you here. There's more ways for you to participate and learn about JARC. We are having a JARC week. And so this was the first event out of three. The next event is tomorrow at 10 a.m. is our Paycheck Protection Program panel. And we'll have um, a lot of industry experts on that talking about the, the PPP loans and giving um, suggestions and advice. And you can ask any questions that you've had. And the link to register is right there on the screen. Additionally, on Thursday at 6 p.m., we're gonna be having the Bronx Borough President Candidate Forum. So we're really excited about that. If you have any burning questions that you would like to ask these candidates, you, I suggest that you register and you can submit some questions and um, we'll get them to our host, Gary Axelbank. And so he will get that to the candidates. So um, I'm excited for us to continue this discussion and Perina is gonna lead a discussion. If you have any questions, um, we would love to hear them. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Lisa Marie. Thank you so much uh, to all of the steering committee members of the JARC. Uh, and thank you all for, for being here today. So we just want to take this opportunity to, to open up um, the discussion, to open up the floor for your suggestions, your recommendations. Uh, what do you think about the activities of the JARC and our, and our focus? Uh, what do you think that we uh, could be doing? Um, and any any anything else, questions that you might have about uh, the JARC? And if you're distracted because you are actively signing up for the working groups, that is okay. <laughs> good afternoon. I'm sorry, good morning rather. My name is Sanad Wadra. Thank you for um, holding this wonderful event. I think it's it's amazing how community stakeholders are really uh, the driving force to the neighborhood, especially when it comes to development. I just want to uh, add and and maybe an ax if if possible, you know, um, the focus on careers, right? I know I hear the word jobs being thrown around a lot, you know, and that's temporary, right? But when you're in a career, say a unionized career. And I know that can be a hard sell because of the affordable housing landscape and the dynamics when it comes to funding. However, again, a union career can take you anywhere around the world you wanna go, right? It doesn't subject you to one neighborhood or, or one job per se, right? It gives you the opportunity to grow. You know, it gives you the opportunity to retire with dignity. Um, a pension, you know, is, is very important. A lot of people have to work forever right and, and hopefully social security is still there when we get we, when we get that to that point right but when you talk about health benefits a lot of these a lot of these projects um along the jerome avenue uh redevelopment don't provide health benefits they don't provide medical right so that's very frustrating especially as a union representative for the carpenters union right when i'm going to these job sites and recruiting people from my community because i'm also from the bronx right they don't have that opportunity, right? If we don't actually um, make it a part of the conversation, and I just wanna, I just wanted to put that out there because I think that is very important when we talk about inclusivity and we talk about equity and 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 bridging the wealth gap, right? And 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 history has has really uh, hurt us in that sense, right? But right now we have the opportunity to make it better. Great. So thank you. Said. Thank you so thank you so so much for that point. It's really and I and I thank you for flagging that because it it really is important to to distinguish between just jobs and careers. And I think that's something that we may want to just kind of hone in on, maybe focus in more on careers because we do want to we do want people to have longevity. And you're absolutely right. Um, you know, job, whether it's in the carpenters union or whatever type of union, those are well-paying jobs. Those create careers. Those create pensions, and those create a life for people. So that's a really important point. Uh, also, I just want to thank you for pointing out the about the medical, uh, the, the the no medical on these sites is something else that I think you know we questions that we want to be asking people as we work with them. What kind of benefits are they providing for uh, workers, whether it's on a development site or in another industry? Um, so thank you for those for those um, for those comments. We really appreciate. It. Great, thank you, thank you so much. So so good, right? Like you're from the Bronx. We're from the Bronx. We 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 hurt when each other hurts and we were happy when each other are happy. And so that, that's what I felt when, when you were just sharing that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I wanna just, uh, if, if I may, I wanna just uh, give the floor to Diana Torres for a second, who has been so instrumental uh, to the JART and just share your thoughts uh, about how we're doing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this caught me off guard. Uh, I don't have anything prepared, but I want to honestly say I'm incredibly proud and happy. My heart is skipping and jumping. Everyone knows how much I love the Bronx. I love you all. Um, there was so much fuel and commitment and passion, um, even in the midst of chaos when our lives flipped and our challenges were exacerbated in our communities and the work and the commitment and you all coming to the table day after day, week after week, like we would literally have meetings um, throughout the day multiple times. And I'm so grateful and humbled to have had the opportunity and have had your time um, and your passion. Uh, you, all of you, you weren't paid to do this work. You were um, going above and beyond. 
and and the work and the passion and the commitment to our community shows and it's a reflection of who you are as individuals as professionals the organizations that are coming to the table unifying joining forces joining expertise and resources this is incredibly powerful um you know i I grew up uh, in, in Burnside Avenue. I went to, you know, to school in the Bronx K through 12. I'm a product of the Bronx, a very proud product of the Bronx and always forever an, an advocate. So I really believe in the mission. I love the, the circular structure in terms of making sure that everyone's at the table, everyone has a perspective and a lens to share. So important to have that inclusion, inclusive environment and um, really organize and coordinate to respond to the injustices that our communities have been faced with and continue to be faced with. Um, and I think it's incredibly um, uh, powerful to set the stage for how to work with our communities to reimagine how to include our communities in what um, resources and investments and programs need to take place um, in order to achieve effective change. So, um, I am here for you. I will be advocating, promoting, trying to find, you know, attract investments and opportunity. Um, uh, anything that you all need, I'm here for you. I love you all dearly so much. <laughs> and for real, my heart is skipping and jumping out of, of my chest right now. So happy to see your faces. So proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diana. We, we really, this, this wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your labor of love. So thank you. Thank you so much for the time. Other suggestions, comments, recommendations? If everybody signed up for tomorrow and Thursday, that's really important. So I see there are 47 participants. So whether you are a steering committee member, a JARC member, or a member from an organization, I hope you will all sign up for the next two events because we are just getting started. So uh, check us out on our website um, at... Uh, uh, Jark BX. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, on Facebook. We have a Twitter account. You won't get a tweet from me. I don't tweet, but someone else will tweet back to you. Um, so we'd love to hear from you guys, but we would also would definitely love to see you tomorrow at our PPP um, uh, roundtable discussion and our Bronx Borough President Candidate Forum, which will be at 6 p.m. on Thursday. Shameless plug. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, well, I want to give the, the requisite 30 seconds just in case anybody had anything uh, burning that they wanted to say or share. Um, again, we are we are circularly led <laughs> among each other and, and we want to expand that. Um, you know, so please join us on our, our working groups. We would love to have your voice, your participation. This is all about building the capacity of our community, uh, bringing together all of the different strengths that we have as a community here. going once. Well, Doreen, I just want to thank you for being a great facilitator and a host, um, making sure that we all stay in message and um, and stick to the schedule. So thank you for that. And thank, thank you, everyone on the steering committee for your fantastic work and Diana for your stewardship and, and, and dedication to community, which is at the center of your heart always. It's always present. Um, and Denisha is not here. I also want to echo um, the group's appreciation of our work as well. See you guys tomorrow. Great. Thanks yeah. again, Karina. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marjorie. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hi, yes, this is Dr. Brown from Community Board 5. I just want to say hello to everyone and thank hello. you. Hello. So Hi. Hi. Good <laughs> to hear from you. Long time. Long time. So I just want to remind everybody that Community Board 5 did collaborate with Community Board 4. And we came to each other's meetings and we, we went across the boundaries. And I'm so glad that it has come to this point. And I will let you know, I would like to join one of the work groups. Yay! Work <laughs> and um, so um, I'm so proud of everybody because you know what? Um, Xavier had uh, brought this to our attention and so many people worked on it and uh, it got voted in and uh, thank you guys for um, taking uh, um, the flag and running with it, okay? 
Thank you so much, Dr. Brown. Just so everybody knows, Dr. Brown is a member of Community Board 5, and she is amazing. I worked with her very closely on the points of agreement, on the recommendations. She's amazing. Board 5 is amazing. And thank you so much for your support. And love right back to you guys. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so, so anybody, much. So any of my members from board four who are on, uh, Dr. Brown has agreed to join one of the working groups. So I'm expecting somebody from my board to step it up. <laughs> no okay. pressure. No pressure. Uh, Michael Nixon, I think I saw you trying to say something. I just want to make sure to create that space. Yeah, um, I wasn't trying to per se, but I'll just, uh, just very briefly say, um, Thank you to all of the members of the extended JARC community, whether it's members of the steering committee or the broader community. Um, it's I've learned an enormous amount and I've seen how when uh, large numbers of people who have different skills and talents uh, work together on a similar goal, there are an, it's amazing what can be done. And so it's been uh, a great honor really to be involved with JARC. And we're really, this is just the very beginning of what we hope we, JARC and the broader JARC community and the broader community hope to see for the Jerome Avenue uh, corridor. Um, and including in the, uh, the greater JARC community, I too want to give special thanks to um, to Diana Torres and to D um, Denisha Thompson uh, for helping to birth all of this. Um, I've told them this directly personally, but also I want to express it more broadly that they've really been extraordinarily helpful, certainly to me and I think to everybody else. And, and also to the other members of Jobs First as well, all the groups uh, facilitation, all of the different things that we looked at. Um, I thought it was extremely helpful um, and it's a way that we're taking this very large group with lots of skills focus on the same uh, broad goals to really move the community forward. So thank you for allowing me to be a part of all this. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. And one more shout out, uh, at least from me, one more shout out and that is to Wetco, to uh, Carrie, to Marco, to Karina for really, really, you know, lending us so many of your resources for providing interpretation today uh, for, for everything that you've done on the partnership. I just want to do a shout out. All right, with that, uh, seeing no other comments or, or questions, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for those of you who can make it uh, at tomorrow at 10 a.m. and then on Thursday at 6 p.m. for our Borough President's uh, Candidate Forum. Thank you so much, everyone. Just before thank you all. Thank you so much. I also want to thank Tameka Cyril, who's like really been beneficial and helping to pull us together to like um, put on these these events. And so Tameka, thank you so much for stepping in and just really acknowledged. Um, I've been pleasure had the pleasure of working with Jarko um, in my first year at Jobs First, and I think we've been just impressed by what you all been able to achieve in the community and looking forward to continuing working with you all. So thank you. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Thank you. See you all tomorrow on Thursday. <laughs> Bye.